Severe Weather Awareness Week, and now is the time to prepare and learn how to stay safe before disaster strikes. Yeah, each day we're taking a look at different weather threats, answering questions, part of our series, Severe Weather Explained. And Chief Meteorologist Dave Restaurant to join us now with what you need to know ahead of severe weather season. It is uh, weird that with, with spring starts tomorrow yeah. after, just yeah. after 11 o'clock in the evening, but the summer is coming, the spring weather is coming, and so this week we're taking a look at a different subject every day. We're talking about hail today. Open the door and I said, what the hail? It's loud. I started thinking, oh my gosh, the second coming. Like, it was that freaky. It can be destructive. The hail basically annihilated everything. And even dangerous. You can see from these pictures and videos sent in from viewers how massive the hail was. Large size hail, like what fell over parts of southeast Michigan last summer in Howell. Lawns were covered in golf ball size hail. For some farms in Livingston County, the aftermath was devastating. You see all the holes in the, the plastic? So that, that field was, uh, that's 5,000 pepper plants right there that are completely destroyed. And at the Hank Kraft Chevrolet dealership in Davidson, baseball size hail damaged just about every car on the lot. Look at that, you know, I mean, that, that's a very strong part of, of the hood. Our question about hail comes from a sophomore at Loyola High School on Detroit's west side. Hi, my name is Angelo Means. I attend Loyola High School. I'm currently in 10th grade. And my question today is, what is necessary for hail to form in thunderstorms? Angela, that's a very, very good question. Let me show you. When you look at tall storms, that means the winds are going up very fast and that can support hail. So this is how it forms. Inside, you have a vertical wind going straight up, which is called an updraft. So that takes the raindrops, keeps it elevated, adds water, and if it is above the freezing cycle here, the freezing line, it gets to ice, it gets heavy, it falls back down, the updraft gets stronger, and the cycle goes over and over and over again and allows the hailstones to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually, they get too big and they will fall out because they're heavier than the up winds, uh, updraft winds can support and will fall out and that's when the hail comes down to the ground. Typically around here, we will get hail uh, less than an inch and so that's not real bothersome. It's impressive, but it's not gonna bother. But you get to an inch, which we call quarter size hail and bigger, that's when you start to get damage to cars, to roofs, to shingles, to siding. Last year, we had baseball size hail. You need a 70 mile per hour wind going straight up to support that kind of hail. Softball size hail, some of the biggest hail in this country. You need a 100 mile per hour updraft vertical wind. That is wild stuff. So uh, for Angela's question, you need an updraft strong enough to support it. Super cooled water is that water that goes back and forth between freezing and not freezing. And the little speck, what we call condensation nuclei to get the little raindrop started, uh, those are the ingredients uh, or the recipe for hail. Hailstones that are less than an inch can fall at 25 miles an hour, can fall to 40 miles an hour if they're bigger than an inch, so they got a lot of speed and weight to them as they come along. Damage to crops, vehicles, and homes. If you are outside, get inside. If you're stuck in your car, stay in your car, safely pull over and protect your head in case there's any concern about the glass breaking around you. That's the best way to stay safe. Getting inside in any kind of severe weather around here is going to keep you safe about 90% of the time.